Just Sorry. a brief order, please. Deputy, sir. Thank you. I was writing in a newspaper last January about the whole issue of water and in that I made the point that I see water as a fundamental right but what was happening was water was being considered as a commodity from which profit could be made. There's no doubt that the setting up of Irish water was an absolute debacle but I propose to put it in with the setting up of other big developments in this country which were also debacles. Setting up of developments like Dart, like Lewis, like the Children's Hospital, like some of the motorways, like the Poolbeg and Cinema and the common denominator in all of those was a massive overspend which equals a waste of public money. And we can see the amounts already spent to date on the entity that is Irish Water. And you could be forgiven for asking the question, well, how many accountants and lawyers does it take to set up Irish Water? Because that's where the money went. Near of Aragad, Gorna Fibana, Kun e the Raychok, Ox the Aragad, the Gorna Zliadori, Ox the Kuntasori. The bonuses and the consultancy were top of the agenda, all organised and decided before any of the service it was supposed to be providing had been in place. So it was obvious what the priorities for Irish water were. And at the same time as these bonuses and fees were being decided and being paid, the calls were coming in, I was meeting people who were asking questions. And there were no answers to those questions for months and months. There were questions about the payment. There was questions about uh, people with particular illnesses who might need more than average need for water. There were people with dependent adult children, whether that was due to employment or being in, in full-time education. There were questions about the type of allowance that people would would get, what would it cover? And then we had all the questions about, well, how many minutes shower could you have and how many times could you flush the toilet? And what were the allowances for people who garden, people who have pets, people who have allotments, and of course the very serious is issues over the PPS numbers. There were concerns about meters, about shared meters, if there was a problem with those. Concerns for people who are living in apartments, for those living in rural areas and on the islands who have water schemes and who are paying. And I would have to admit, say, that there are examples from rural Ireland of very good water schemes. And yes, people do pay, but they're getting an efficient service. It's a very nominal amount. And the people who pay, they're the ones who have the say. They're the, de the decision makers. So I have to ask, was there any question of doing a social impact analysis to see the effects of what was being proposed? Now, they were all genuine concerns for people, um, but there were no answers to those. And it could be also think that it was very much like a seen out of a Laurel and Hardy film that this is another fine mess you've got me into because if ever there was an exercise in how not to do something, certainly Irish Water showed us that. People were protesting for a variety of reason, reasons and there are people who are against the principle of paying for water and there are those people who just cannot pay because they just basically cannot afford it and they're not going to be happy with what was here today. But there were people protesting really at the entity that Irish Water because of their inefficiency, their ineptitude and the gross arrogance in the way in which it was doing its business. Now, Kinta thought five minutes ago in Slakursi Ishkis and Tirsha, Akvina five minutes ago in Lablinta Inish, and we know some of the problems. Every beach in this country should have a blue flag because we have fabulous beaches, but they don't have blue flags. We have areas in central Dublin and other parts of the country with systems that are antiquated and leaking, and we know about poor quality of water. We've had water shortages, particularly last summer. And then the spectre of potential privatisation, and that is a real fear. And while you might say that you're you're committed to no privatisation, I don't think people believe you because regardless of what you say, there's a real possibility of future scenario on privatisation if Irish water were to become insolvent. And yes, there are people who waste water and there's also the problem of leaking pipes and the extent of the water that is lost. It's a poor system and infrastructure, but it's a system and a poor infrastructure that has gone on for years. And those problems didn't happen overnight, so where have been the solutions, the possible solutions in the past they were missing? Now, there are people I think I've met who agree with paying for water and there are people who can afford to pay. And I believe there are people who are willing to contribute because Irish people are generous and they would contribute to ensure that we have a better service and if they could contribute to solving the problems. There are people who may have been satisfied with where you are starting today, with what you are proposing, but you've lost that ground because you put the cart before the horse. Regardless of whether we agree with water charges or not, there are serious issues and they are still not addressed here today because the basic serious issue is with Irish water. You said in your speech, Minister, that local authorities could not have done that. I don't think there was enough 
resources put into our local authorities over the years on this particular issue, I think they could have done a much, much better job than what we've seen to date from Irish Water. I don't know how Irish Water can continue. I think it is an overpriced quango, and I think there is a need to go back to a drawing board for a really viable organisation like the local authorities who can do this. I would recommend that you might read an article by Dr. Tom O'Dolan from Neri, who set out some really viable op options for the whole system of water that we have here. I think we have to keep human beings in mind, not customers and not just profit. And as Ireland is totally supportive of the developing world having access to clean water and at no cost, I think our citizens deserve the same.